Hi everyone, this is Sandy Lemke from FreeWebsiteTutorials.com. This is a screenshot of a brand new site that we're just in the process of building. Uh, one of the first tutorials that we've decided to do is to teach people how to make this very basic drop shadow around images. The whole purpose of this site is to take some of the tips that we learned as we were building ThemePartyQueen.com. That was our first site. And we learned some, you know, just uh, workarounds, things that make your life a little bit easier as a website designer from a beginner's perspective. We have absolutely no formalized design uh, experience. Our, all of our uh, tricks that we've learned really have been from struggling as we built this site. So the first tutorial that we're going to actually do is this one on how to put this drop shadow on photos. In my opinion, having that drop shadow on your images just makes it look a little bit more professional. A lot of the images in ThemePartyQueen.com were just you know, flat on the page. And as we built that site and we learned this new technique, we went and we started changing the photos on this site. Um, not all of them, but the key ones. And so now, you know, the site just looks a little bit more professional. And so you'll notice that I did that on this photo as well as the images that are in the header. So how did I do that in Photoshop? Let's take a look. The first thing that you want to do is you want to decide where is this photo going to be placed? What is the color of the background that you want to place it on? In my case, it's white. If you wanted to change that, you could go into your color palette and change the background. What we need to do first is we need to create a document that we're actually going to put this photo on top of. So you want to go File, New, and you got to decide on you know what size you want it to be. I usually start with, a, for, the, for the layout that I just showed you, I usually start with a 200 by 200 square, uh, 200 pixel square uh, with a white background. And so I'm going to say OK. And now I've got this document. Now, if I know that my final document has to be 200 pixels wide, I usually make the image about 25 pixels less than that. So in this case, 175. So I'm going to go image, image size, and I'm going to go 175. And I've got my constrained proportions on here, so that's why 160 came up as opposed to 175 there. I'm going to say OK. And now, in order to see this thing, I'm going to hit actual pixels. OK, so that's the first thing. I've got an image that is slightly less than my background document here. All right, so the next thing that we want to do, if you'll remember on this image here, right around the border, in between the image and the, and the shadow, there is a fine white line. That's called a stroke. You don't have to put that in, but in my opinion, it creates more of a three-dimensional look. So I like to put that in. And I also, you can pick the color of what you want your stroke to be. In my opinion, it looks best if the stroke matches the color of your background. That's personal preference again. You can do whatever you want, but let's look at how we create that stroke. The first thing that you need to do in order to free up some functionality in Photoshop, you need to change this word background to anything other than background. So just double click on it, and I'm just going to say bio photo. Okay, now once I do that, I can come up in here and go Edit, Stroke, and right away one pixel comes up and the color that we have in this foreground box. I like white. That fits for, my, you know, for this particular job that I'm doing, so I'm going to leave that alone. I never change any of this stuff down here. I leave it the way it is at center, and I just say OK. And so you'll notice that this very fine line now is all the way around the image. So the next step is to create our drop shadow. What you want to do is double click and the layer style box is going to open up. So the first thing you want to do, there's all different kinds of effects that you can add to an image. But for today's lesson, what we're going to do is hit this drop shadow, check that box, and you'll notice that you've got certain options here. 
What you want to do is you need to get the drop shadow menu to open. And you do that by double clicking on this drop shadow. And now you've got some different choices here. Again, there's a ton of different things that you can select and you can mess around with. But I have learned that once you get an effect that you like, I just do this exact same effect on every single image because it's easier for me to remember what to do. So I always put 75 opacity. I always put 122 um, in the angle. That's just the angle that the, the, the shadow comes off of the image. And then I like this to be 7 pixels and this to be 7 pixels. All of this is just personal preference, as I said. But in order to speed things up in Photoshop, if you just mess around with this and get to the settings that you like, it's easiest to me to just keep using the same settings. So here we go. If we say OK, you can't see the shadow on there yet. But if you look over here in your Layers palette, you can see that you've got a drop shadow effect. So now what you want to do is you want to grab onto the photo and you're going to move it into your document. And then I turn on the Move button and I just move this thing into the corner and I use my arrows to try to get it away from the corner a little bit. And what we're going to do next is we're going to crop this thing. So what I like to do is you know, we don't need all this extra white space on here. It's just going to make the, the document di or the image bigger for no reason. So what you want to do is go get crop, go right tight up into the corner, but be very careful not to crop off any of the shadow. You might think that doing this kind of thing is okay because visually it looks like you're not cropping the shadow. But trust me, there is a very faint gray shadow that you can't really visually see. And if you crop it off here, you're going to cut it off and it's going to look really dumb. So pull it out and go ahead and crop it, but make sure you stay far away from that border so that it looks like a, a you know, a an, an, uh, shadow that just kind of fades into the background. Then say OK. And that's basically it. The next step is just to file, save for the web. And however you upload your graphics currently to your web page, you know, that's what you'll do. I usually just save this as a JPEG, and that's pretty much it. Now, you know, if you can remember back here what you want to do. In fact, I wanted to show you this. When I built this header, this is an example of how a shadow looks when it's cropped too tightly. I don't like how this looks. I need to fix this. See how that just kind of looks like a very straight edge? I cropped it way too close. This is what you want. You want it to just kind of fade off into the background. So that's basically the end of this first tutorial. Hopefully this has been helpful to your, be, you know, the beginner website designers. Our whole goal with this website is to add more very simple tutorials like this. This site is not meant for website designers who've been doing this forever and who have been formally trained. This is just our attempt at helping other people who were like us 15 months ago when we first started our first site. Um, we're going to try to add things as we learn new tricks. We're going to add them here and uh, we hope that this has been helpful.